All right, welcome back to the Pre-TI Team Review and Previews, where I go through every single attendee of this year's International. I do a brief review of their past DBC year and give some slight previews into how well I personally think each team is going to be doing, um, just based off of watching uh, throughout this year and going through a little bit of stats. <clears throat> like I've said in previous videos, of course, all these stats are just kind of for fun, um, meaning that like if you see a team that has not won a single game on Radiant or something like that, but the sample size is only like three, Take that with a grain of salt. These are just stats that are looking at to look at for fun, and they are not to be used to like bet or anything, or anything serious like that. So, anyways, yes, uh, climbing up our list from the bottom of the DPC standings upwards, we are now up to fifth place internationally. Uh, that is Invictus Gaming, coming in with 1,100 DPC points, finishing second place in the region. Uh, just behind PSG LGD. These guys are a team that on the surface you might think might have peaked a little bit early and are fizzling out near the end of the season, but I don't think it's really that profound. I think these guys were just as close to doing well in a second major uh, that, they would, that they were in the first. Um, it's just some slight roster complications and some unfortunate uh, placement or matches in their regular season ended up costing them. Um, so yes, uh, starting with season one of the Chinese DPC, they finished first place. Uh, obviously, they were tied with Aster, uh, and so in that tiebreaker, Invictus Gaming wins that 1-2-0. So Van, with a 6-1 record, get 500 DPC points there. So, already, coming in as the top seed from China is no joking matter. Uh, so they're one of the hottest teams coming into this tournament, a team that a lot of people are looking forward to watching. And they don't really disappoint. I think there was a little bit of a scare when they had won their first series, then they got knocked down to the lower bracket by Evil Geniuses, and then they played against Thunder Predator and they lost game one against Thunder Predator. So suddenly they're one game away from losing and being knocked out of the tournament entirely. But they come back and they win and they go undefeated from there. Um, Series-wise, not, not individual game. They did still drop games, notably against PSG LGD and Evil Geniuses. But yes, in total, they ended up going 5-1 and one in their series. Of course, they did not have to play in either the group stage or the wildcard stage because they were the top seed. So they were lucky enough to start in the upper bracket. Uh, following that win, though, uh, and a miraculous one, I might add, a reverse sweep in the Grand Finals against Evil Geniuses, um, they get off to a little bit of a rocky start in the second season. I wouldn't say they played terrible. They were still beating the teams that they needed to beat, um, such as the bottom three teams of the Chinese region. However, they were having a harder time uh, consistently beating the, other, uh, the upper echelon of the Chinese teams. The ones that they had beat the season before, which got them first, this time they struggled a little more against and they finished fourth place, which is still not bad. They still qualified. However, this time they're in the wildcard stage. And in this wildcard stage, in this major, um, Ollie was uh, unable to attend. And so Super, their coach, was standing in for him. And I think he did a pretty damn good job. Yeah, IG was one game away from making it to the group stage. And if they made it to that group stage, I think they would done, would have done pretty well for themselves. They are a really solid team. Um, again, if, if they just ended up being tied with Team Nygma, and Team Nygma was also another team at that major that was just unstoppable. Um, well, until they got stopped. So, because of that one tiebreaker loss in the wildcard stage, they end up getting a, an ugly looking 15th place on their history. However, like I said, I don't think it's that bad because they came into the wildcard stage where only two out of six teams make it. They were one game away from making it to the wildcard stage, and I guarantee you, um, that if they had won that wildcard stage game, they would have made it through the group stage to at least the lower bracket. Can't guarantee that they made they would have made upper bracket, but they were looking really, really good, and it was really sad to see them go. Um, so yeah. So now looking at the games that they've played against other teams that are also attending this year's international, of course, because they're from the Chinese region, um, they have played four series per season against teams that are all attending TI. Um, and in season one, like I said, it started off really strong. Uh, they beat Elephant, Fiji Gaming, and PSG LGD. The only series that they ended up dropping in that season was against Team Aster, who they ended up getting revenge on in the tiebreakers. And with that top seed finish, they first play against Vici Gaming in the upper bracket. Vici Gaming, a team that had gone through the wildcard stage and then done very well in the group stage to get to that upper bracket. Uh, they end up knocking Vici Gaming down to the lower bracket, but then they meet Evil Geniuses. Like I said, Evil Geniuses knocks them down 2-0. Then they go to the lower bracket and they play against Thunder Predator and they lose game one. So yeah, like I was saying, they were one game away from being knocked out of the whole tournament. But they turn it around, they win that series 2-1. They then beat Secret 2-0, PSG LGD 2-1 in the lower bracket finals. And then they get they pull off a reverse sweep against Evil Geniuses in one of the most dramatic and most BM fashions. Uh, of course, we have the infamous emo question mark, uh, question mark god, 
I mean, the, the balls to do that when you're down in a series. I, he had done it after the third game, GG, but you're still down 2-1 to one against one of the best teams in the world. And he, he pulled it off. He pulled it off. I don't know how they did it, but they did. Um, but yeah, like I said, things kind of got off to a rocky start in Season 2. Uh, all the teams that they were able to beat the season before, they struggled struggled against, other than Vici Gaming. These guys seem to do pretty well against Vici Gaming. They beat them in both seasons and in the Singapore Major. Um, they did lose to them, though, in the wildcard stage of the uh, Animator, Vici Gaming being the top seed coming out of that wildcard stage. Um, so yes, they lose to Astro, PSG, LGD, and Elephant, and then they beat Vici in Season 2. And then in the Animator in the wildcard stage, in their best of twos, they beat Secret 2-0. Another team that they don't really seem to struggle against is Team Secret. And then Vici Gaming, they lose 2-0 to. Nothing too. So again, they were one game away from making it out of that wildcard stage. And they would have made it to the main stage if they had made it out. Um, they just got beat out by a Team Nigma team who was just not going to take defeat. Another funny thing I noticed that really isn't that like important, but it's just kind of funny, is that all of the series that these guys have played in the DBC this year, not just the ones that I'm counting, I'm talking about every single series that they've played against every single team in this year's DPC. They have never lost a best of three in three games. Every time they lose a best of three, it's when they're losing 2-0. So they, for some reason, whenever a series was tied, they would just have a super good track record of closing the series out. Um, as I'm spoiling it a little bit, but their game three win rates and the three game threes that they played, they were, I mean, seven game threes that they played, they were seven and oh, they didn't drop a single one, which I thought was pretty crazy. And... You know, I obviously had mentioned before, you know, take these stats with a grain of salt, but it, it just goes to show that, you know, if these guys are tied uh, in a series on the TI main stage, you know, there's a good chance that they're winning that game. They have shown throughout this entire year that they're pretty damn good at those deciding matches. But anyways, uh, looking now at their game, their stats, I've t counted up a total of 43 games, uh, which is every single game here, which is every single team. Uh, attending TI, plus all the teams that they played against on the main stage, which every team that they ended up playing against on the main stage in the first major is a TI attendee anyways. So regardless, 43 games, they go 23 and 20 overall, so just over 50%. Uh, on Radiant, they go uh, 11 and 10, again, just over 50%. Same thing for Dyer, they go 12 and 10. On first pick, they have played significantly more games on first pick, so it seemed like that's what they were really prioritizing uh, when they had selection. Uh, they went 16 and 12, 57% win rate, and they actually go slightly negative on last pick, going 7 and 8. On Radiant first pick, they go 7 and 5. Radiant second pick, they go 4 and 5, so slightly above and then slightly below 50. Uh, dire first pick, they go 9 and 7, and on Dire second pick, they go an even 3 and 3. Uh, looking now at their game 1s and game 2s, they were actually negative in both of those. They were 7 and 10, but the saving grace of that was that whenever they made it to a deciding game 3, they were flawless. They were 7 and 0. And of course, in the one game four and game five that they played in the grand finals of the first major, they won those as well. Uh, looking now at their game, their win rates for matches less than 40 minutes, uh, significantly more games were less than 40 minutes than more. Uh, they were 14 and 17, but after 40 minutes, they were nine and three. So it seemed like these guys really preferred when games really took their time. Um, Overall, I wouldn't see it's a terrible record, though, considering the, the caliber of the teams that they're playing against. I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't put any money on them losing games faster than 40 minutes. Looking now at the heroes that they've played, uh, across those 43 games, they picked a total of 69 different heroes. Uh, their most played being Lion, who they have played ju all, just under half of their games, they had picked Lion. They loved that hero in the major specifically. Um, and then after they had won that major, they were still picking it into the second season. Um, so yes, yeah, so Lion with 21 games, Phoenix with 15, Mars with 12, that was another combo they liked to run, was the Mars-Phoenix lane. Very common combo in Dota 2, but it's one that they really like picking. Shadow Shaman, they played 10 times, Emo's Void Spirit, they picked 9 times, and then Morphling, Oracle, and Storm Spirit, uh, all being picked 8 times as well. Looking at their best heroes now, um, it was actually kind of difficult to find some of their best heroes. A lot of the heroes that they played a lot ended up hovering around the 50% win rate marker. Uh, specifically Lion, who I believe was like 11 and 10 or something like that. They picked them 21 times and they went slightly positive. But regardless, uh, their best heroes being Phoenix, who went 10 and 5 on 15 games, so very solid. Uh, Void Spirit, 6 and 3, and then Timbersaw and Wraith King both being 4 and 1. As for worst heroes, again, kind of hard to find heroes that were absurdly bad. I couldn't really find one, so I just had to settle for Oracle and Storm Spirit being 3 and 5. Uh, looking at the heroes most banned by Invictus Gaming, they had banned Puck a total of 18 times. We get all that surprised to see Puck on a most banned list after that hero has been insane for like a year now. Uh, next up, Juggernaut. Now, this one's actually surprising because 
it's juggernaut. He wasn't he wasn't even that strong of a hero this year. I wouldn't say he was weak either. He was just kind of middle of the pack. It's just kind of weird that they banned him in over a third of their games. But regardless, uh, finally, Monkey King and Beastmaster were 13 bans each by Invictus Gaming. Now looking at the heroes most banned against them, they had 66 different heroes banned against them. IO with 22, so over half of the games they had IO banned against. And it was always a first phase IO ban too, whenever it was banned. Uh, Troll Warlord with 20. Yeah, uh, Fly Fly, is a, he's a troll player. And Troll was pretty decent this year, especially when they first gave him his new Aghanim Scepter. So 20 bans there. And then finally Timbersaw with 14 bans on him. Looking now at their roster, uh, coming in as their coach, we have Super, who actually filled in for Ollie in the second major, which is maybe a reason why uh, Invictus Gaming didn't end up making it out of that wildcard stage. However, Invictus Gaming was still looking very, very, very solid in that wildcard stage. But who knows? Ollie could have been the, the, the real X factor. He could have been the difference maker um, in that in that wildcard stage. I guess we'll never know now. But regardless, uh, Super... Uh, he has never been to an international as a coach, but as a player, the furthest he's ever gone was finishing in the was losing in the best of ones, finishing 13th to 16th place with Team uh, Invictus Gaming Vitality, uh, Invictus Gaming sub team. Um, Fly Fly, the furthest he's ever gone was finishing ninth uh, ninth to 12th place at TI8 with Team Serenity. Uh, Emo and JT, the furthest they've ever gone was finishing uh, fourth place in qualifiers in China at the last international TI9s. Uh, qualifiers, they have played that one with Invictus Gaming. Cock out of their four position, the furthest he's ever gone was finishing second place at TI7. Uh, that was with Newbie when they got swept by Team Liquid. And then finally, Ollie, uh, as well, has never been to an international. He was on the same stack, the same team, which was Invictus, the team that they're on now, with uh, Emo and JT when they lost in four at fourth place at the TI9 qualifiers, but he also lost in third, fourth place at the TI8 qualifiers with Geek. Um, so, again, uh, two players that have made it to the menu stage of the international a few times, and a coach that's been there as well, but also a fresh amount of players who have never been before and they've got something to prove. So it's really exciting. Uh, I'm personally excited to watch Emo, and I, I want to see how, how BM he can be. With all the new packs that they've added to Dota, the BM is going to be crazy. Um, and then finally, wrapping things up with some team averages. Uh, Invictus Gaming across all of these games. At an average XPM of 2207, X, uh, sorry, GPM of 2207, an average XPM of 2638, average KDA of 3.74, and an average max duration of lower than normal, uh, 36 minutes and 12 seconds. Whether or not that's a good thing, considering that their win rate was below 50% for games less than 40 minutes, who knows? Um, yeah, so yeah, that does it for my review. As for a preview, um, like I had sort of alluded to earlier in the video, I think that IG is a team that on the surface some people might think have peaked too early, that they're on a downward spiral. I mean, look, they finished first place in the first half, and then they finished fourth in their region, and then they finished 15th. They couldn't even make it out of the wildcard stage. But I think it's a lot, uh, a lot less profound than that. I think this team is just one that had an unfortunate start to a second season in which they ended up cleaning up the rest of the season quite well. And then they unfortunately, because of the unfortunate start of their second season, uh, got put into a wild card stage with some really really good teams. VG Gaming and Team Enigma made it out of that wild card, or were the teams that made it out of it, and they full full they fully deserved it. And Invictus Gaming was one game away from getting out. So, on the surface, like I said, it looks like they're on the downward spiral. But I think this is still one of the strongest teams in the world right now. And I'd be very 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 surprised if these guys didn't make top six. I, I am expecting a deep run. I am expecting a lot of fun Dota from these guys. Again, they've got a lot of young players. Uh, who have yet to prove themselves at TI, and I, I think it's going to be really fun watching them. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, as always. Uh, do you think they're going to flop? Do you think they are they actually are on a downward spiral, and that's why they weren't able to make it out of the wildcard stage? Or do you think they're going to do super well and blow everyone away? Do you think Emo is going to keep question marking? <laughs> do you think these guys are going to be the new BM gods of TI, and not and they're going to take it away from OG? Uh, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. And yeah. Please be sure to subscribe if you enjoy. I'm going to be uploading every single day for pretty much the next month until the end of TI. Uh, my next review is going to be on Quincy Crew, uh, North America's Quincy Crew. Um, so if you don't want to miss that, again, please subscribe. And I will see you guys tomorrow uh, with that review. Bye.